God wants me to let you know today that this salvation, that this Jesus that you have received cares about every area of your life, including your finances. Hallelujah. Say I'm the carrier and the manifester of God's healing power. Say it like you say I'm the carrier. Let us go to Romans 8 verse 19. Romans 8 verse 19. Thank you, worship team. As usual, you, whenever you guys are singing, it's like there are other millions of angels with you. Uh, I really appreciate you a lot for the work that you are doing in the house of the Lord. Mr. Ngoveni and Mr. Shilwane, in his absentia, you are appreciated. We, I encourage you to keep on doing the work of God. Uh, I would like somebody to take the picture of the current state of the church. Just go stand there and take the picture. Uh, I love keeping memories like this. When God wants to, us to do something. Hallelujah. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. That's why I keep memories. When my dad was very sick, God said to me, take his picture. Uh, you'll never see him in this state again. I took the picture. When I went back home, he was very healthy and very well. He has gained a lot of weight after we prayed for him. Hallelujah. So I'd like us also to, to do the same. Can somebody read Romans 8.19? Said For the earnest expectation of creation waiteth, for the revealing of the sons of God. New King James Vision read thus, for the earnest expectation of the creation, eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. The world is waiting for the revelation of the children of God. And this is the time now that the children of God needs to be revealed. Amen. The Bible said, what, what is the world waiting for? For the revelation of the children of God. How are the children of God being, going to be revealed in a world like this? In a world filled with fear, in the world filled with anxiety, in the world filled with sicknesses. How are the children of God going to be revealed? The children are going to be revealed because they will be the carriers of hope. They will be the carriers of healing. They will be the carriers of faith. They will be the carriers of everything that the world needs. So where you are seated right now, there is somebody who is waiting for you, for the Christ in you to be revealed. You are not just here by default. You are not listening to me by default. There is someone, there is a whole village, there is a whole township, there is a whole suburb that can only live because you have manifested. There is a street that can only live because you have manifested. There, there, there is a country that can only live because the children of God have manifested. The children of God cannot afford to be living the, the way the world does. We cannot afford to be thinking like the world. Why do we think like the world? Because we don't know who we really are. We don't know what God is doing in our lives. We are focusing, you know, we cannot afford to focus on what the enemy is doing. Am I talking to someone? Hallelujah. One enemy number one of the manifestation of the children of God is discouragement. When children of God are discouraged, they become fearful. 
When they become fearful, they can't manifest God because there is no way that you can manifest God in a state of fear and discouragement. Have you ever heard a prayer of a discouraged person? It's a faithless prayer. It's a hopeless prayer. They pray because they've got words to say, but those words are not filled with faith. Am I talking to someone? So today's word, I want to go, our gospel heals. God's word heals. And I, I, I need to know that our gospel heals. God's word heals. I'm going to tell you again this morning, when I woke up, because I'm going to teach about healing today, I woke up with all the symptoms of flu. I asked my wife, every, every symptom was there. I said, I'm not going to rush to church. I must deal with this. I'll go there healthy and preach the word of God. Because I cannot preach what I cannot live. So I stood up. I went to my prayer closet. I said, body, you won't be deceived by virus. You are not going to receive the language of the virus. You will receive the language of the word of God. You, and what is the language of the word of God? For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. I want you to understand that every form of sickness, I've been preaching this, operates under the law of sin and death. God and his word are the same. Hallelujah. I was telling my body that God and, the word and his word are the same. When he says, by the stripes of Jesus Christ, I'm healed. In God's mind, he sees my lungs restored. He sees my throat restored. He sees my body restored. And what does the word of God do? When you hear that word and receive it, the word of God comes to your body and attach itself to the area where there is sickness and, and diseases and begin to frame the mind of God in your body. Am I talking to someone? That's the, that's the, that's the same way that God created heaven and earth. He saw the world. Even though, uh, we said it on Thursday, even though it was chaotic, it was dark, it was chaotic, God began to frame what he sees in the world. As he frames it, he releases the word. As he releases the word, the Holy Spirit manifests what the word of God is saying concerning the situation. So the same applies to your body. Hallelujah. There is no sickness. There is no disease. There is no power here on earth can fight against what God sees in you through his word. So many don't understand what healing is. That's the reason why the children of God can't even pray for somebody. You don't have to go there. Okay, house number what, 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 okay, it's fine. What's his name? I know the name. Okay, I'm going to my prayer closet. Father, let your words attach themselves to that person and frame and manifest healing upon that body. How, do, how does that happen? You see, when, when Adam was, was formed, not created, when his body was clay, it was soil from the body, why did God say? God went to Adam and breath the breath of life. And every word that God, everything that God has in his mind concerning Adam, how he's going to live, how he's going to manifest himself. At the moment God breathed the breath of life unto Adam, the whole mind of God began to manifest in his body. Am I talking to someone? You, you, must, you, you must learn to see your body. Be like God. Be visual with your faith. 
Even though he said we don't walk by sight. We don't walk by sight of things that we can see or feel or manifest physically. We walk by sight by things of things that we can see and manifest spiritually. So when you are visual when you, with your faith, why do you begin to see? You begin to see yourself healing, healed. You begin to see yourself walking. You begin to see yourself running. You begin to see yourself doing things that you cannot do. Why? Because as you visualize, as you see yourself, you are speaking the word of God. One thing that people, many people don't understand, that the new birth, when you were born again, there was no separation between healing and salvation. Salvation is a package. Is a what? It's a package. It comes with deliverance. Salvation comes with healing. Salvation comes with increase. Salvation comes with expansion. So the, today's religion has separated all these things. Now I'm going to pray for wealth. Now I'm going to pray for healing. Now I'm going to pray. You know, all those things are okay. We do them. We pray. We do deliverance and healing to those who are still spiritual babes. That's why the Bible in Israel says, when somebody is sick, call for the elders. Let them go and lay hands on him. Who are the elders? They are not the elders because they've got white hair. They are not the elders because they are old. They are elders because they've practiced the word. They've manifested the word. They understand the revelation in the word. So even a 16-year-old can be called an elder in the church once they start understanding the word of God. Do you understand? So when they say, if somebody is sick, when the Bible says, if somebody is sick, go and call the elders. Let them lay hands. No, the elders are not going to do something. They are saying, if they are so call for the elders, they are saying, that one is still what? A baby. Still what? So I want the church to understand what healing is. Do you understand? Hallelujah. So when you were born again, everything in you became born again. Your, your, your brains developed the ears to hear the word. Your, your organs developed the ears to hear the word. Your finances developed the ears, grew the ears to hear the word. Your marriage grew the ears to hear the word of God. Why? Because before you were born again, your brains, your body had the ears to hear from the kingdom of darkness. When the kingdom of darkness releases sickness, your body received and received them. When your, when your kingdom of darkness releases depression, your, your brains received and re received them and believed them. But now when you are born again, when you are the grace carrier and the child of God, you have developed a new form of listening skills. You have the spiritual ears to hear what the word of God is saying about your body. To hear what the word of God is saying about your situation. So when salvation comes, it comes in totality. Am I talking to someone? So because you are a child of God, because you are an elder, when you walk with the body filled with the word of God concerning healing, what happens when somebody is sick? You manifest what you have. Are we together? When, when, when Peter and Paul were walking from to the beautiful gate, when they saw the man with the lame feet, they said to him, silver and gold we do not have. What we have is what? Is the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Why did they wear? Why did they mean by what they have the man is the name of Jesus? It was not only the name. Let, let me give you a revelation today. It is not only the name. Because the sons of Sceva used the same principle. They applied the name of Jesus Christ. But the demons stood up and beat them up. So was the name of Jesus Christ powerless? No. Paul and Peter had the word. 
And the word, the big in the, the Bible, John 1 says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and nothing that was made was made without the word. They heard the word in their body, they were oozing the word of God. And when that word came, when that word manifested, it manifested in the name. Am I talking to someone? The word manifested how? In the name. When they say what to silver and gold you not have, what you have is the name. They were taught the word. They knew how the word works. They knew how the word is applied. When they mentioned the name of Jesus, everything that they knew about the healing came up. The imagination, the manifestation of healing came out of them. That word attached itself to the lame man. And the word began to locate the area where the man cannot walk properly. As the word located the area where the man cannot walk properly, the word began to manifest what they, Peter and Paul, know. In, my, in his tribes, he is healed. And they knew that he's healed. And the Holy Spirit began to say, okay, is that what you know? I'm going to manifest what you are imagining. So the manifestation will come through what you know. Do you understand what healing is now? So it is not a, a magic word. By his stripes I'm healed. But pastor, I've been saying by his stripes I'm healed for, for, for more than 10 days now. Nothing is happening. No. It's not, it doesn't work like that. Go for the word. Go for the word. Understand who was healed and how. In the Bible. And receive that word. The moment you say by his stripes I'm healed, you'll begin to see blind Bartimaeus. By his stripes I'm healed. Oh, he was blinded, he can see. Now I'm healed. Also. You'll begin to manifest that which you see in the word. That is the manifestation of the children of God. Please come and pray for me and be healed. Ah, not me. No. It doesn't need the pastor. It needs the word. That's why the Bible says, those who are sick must call for the elders. Who are the elders? Those who can manifest the word. Those who knows, we call them word practitioners. Hallelujah. Are you ready to be a healing machine? Are you ready to walk in the power of healing? Don't separate salvation and healing. The same faith that made you to receive salvation, the same faith that made you to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior is the same faith that healeth. Is the same faith that restoreth. Is the same faith that increases. Don't separate them. Am I talking to someone? Parents, you must at home Get all of the ch of your children. My child, you know, only fever. No, 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 no. Lay your hands on the child. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke this spirit. But don't be a wordless Christian. When it's in the name of Jesus, the spirit searches the inward part of your body, searching the word that you know about healing and releases it and take it to the child. Hallelujah. Am I talking to someone? Let us go to Hebrews 1. Oh. Hebrews 11, my apologies. Hebrews 11. From 1 to 3. Hebrews 11. From one to three. I mean, you are, you are feeling the healing power manifesting in your bodies.
Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. 11 verse 1 up to 3, but I'm not looking for the. For by it the elders obtain a good testimony. But I want you to look at verse 3. By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Check here. By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are not seen are made what? Visible. So the word of God frames. The word of God makes things happen. What is to frame? Look at this picture. It's what is framed. It's inside what? A frame. So when it's framed, there is what? There is order. So the word of God does what? It does the same. It does what? It frames. So when you release the word of God, what does it do? It locates the area where breakthrough is needed. And begin to frame what God is seeing. It projects the mind of God upon the situation. The word of God projects what God is seeing in you. The word of God releases what God is seeing in you. When God, when the word, and the Holy Spirit comes and manifests what God is seeing. Don't be, don't be fearful. Don't live with fear. For God has not given you the spirit of fear. Live by the word. Am I talking to someone? Live by the word. I'm, I'm reminded of the story of the woman with the issue of blood. I think, yeah, let's go there. Uh, look, 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 chapter 8. Look, chapter 8, verse 43 to 48. So now a woman having a flow of blood for 12 years who had spent all her livelihood on physicians and could not be healed by any came from behind and touched the body of his garment and immediately her flow of blood stopped. And Jesus said, who touched me? When all denied it, Peter and those said, Master, the multitudes throng and praise you. And you say, who touched me? But Jesus said, somebody touched me, for I perceived power going out from me. Now when the woman saw that she was not hidden, she came trembling, falling down before him. She declared to him in the presence of all people the reason she had touched him, and now she was healed immediately. And Jesus said to her, Daughter, be of good cheer. Your faith has made you well. I want you to look at two things. Two things that are very important. This woman was not only healed of a disease, she was also healed financially. And most of you don't see that. The Bible says she has spent all that she has, all her livelihood on physicians. And could not be healed by any. Meaning she was continuously spending money. She was continuously spending money to receive what? Healing. But when God healed her, he did not only heal her body, he healed her wallet also. Am I talking to someone? That God heals everything. God is not only looking unto your diseases. He knows that the enemy came to steal, kill, and what? And destroy him. So what the enemy did with this woman first was to steal her livelihood. In today's word, we'll say all her savings were spent on physicians and doctors. And nothing was, was happening. 
I want to put it to you that most sicknesses that are coming to people's body right now, most of you will tell you that my medical aid has been exhausted. I don't have money to go do this. The enemy is attacking your salvation in totality. Because he knows that when you are saved, everything about you is what is saved. But if it touches one area of your life, it's going to affect what? Your whole salvation. Including what? Your finances, your joy, your peace. I can imagine that maybe she had a husband and the husband left her because of the issue of what? Of the nonstop flow. So when we speak about healing, it is not only for your physical body. Healing includes every area of your life. I'm talking to someone here. They are mentally depressed because of things that are going on in your, in your life. I want to put it to you today that God is releasing healing unto that area. God is releasing healing unto that situation. What has been depressing you? What has made you to stop waking? What has made you to take early leave or early leave or whatever leave that you took? Because you cannot work of, of depression. No. Say it like you say, I'm the carrier and the manifester of God's healing power. Say so wherever I go, people will be healed emotionally, financially, physically, and otherwise. Hallelujah. Say the word of God projects his heart and mind to my life. That's how you should see the word of God. Some of you are saying, Pastor, I didn't know. I only know Isaiah 53 verse 5. By his stripes I'm healed. That's it. No. Let us look at the other form of healings. When Jesus Christ healed, he said to the woman, go away, your faith has made you whole. Your sins are forgiven. Jesus, in the Bible, he equates the forgiveness of sins with healing. How can the one whose sins are forgiven still be sick? Am I talking to someone? Say, my sins are forgiven. I have no capacity to carry sickness and diseases because salvation has made me whole. Say my pocket has been made whole. My mind has been made whole. My relationships has been made whole by the reason of salvation. Am I talking to someone? Are you excited? I can't hear you excitement. Are you excited? And I want you to understand this. It is God's will to heal you. I want to look cool. It is God's will, not God. God, if you are willing, please heal me. Can you, can you go to Luke chapter 5 quickly? Luke chapter 5 quickly. Luke chapter 5, verse 12 to 13. And it happened when he was in a certain city that behold, a man who was full of leprosy saw Jesus Christ. He fell on his faith and implored him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Then he put out his hand and touched him, saying, I'm willing, be cleansed. Immediately the leprosy left him 
and he charged him not to tell anyone. Let me tell you why, why the man said, Lord, if you are willing, you can heal me. Leprosy in those days was regarded as the sickness, a sickness associated with sin. It was a sickness associated with what? We see that the reason why he went to Jesus Christ and said, Jesus, if you are willing, heal me. He's saying, if I am forgiven, let me be healed. And Jesus Christ is saying, Jesus Christ does, does not only release the word that be healed. He, ties, he, 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 he touches him, stretches forth his out his hand, and what? And touching. And leprosy was a contagious disease. That's why people with leprosy were, were taken away out of the society. But Jesus Christ touches him saying what? You, you are mine. I have died for you. I came here for you. I am willing. You are healed. So you might be seated somewhere there. Asking yourself this question. Jesus Christ. If you are willing, make me whole. I want to put it to you that Jesus, while he was on the cross, it was the first sign to show that he's willing for you to be saved, to receive everything that pertains to salvation. Jesus is willing to make you whole. Jesus is willing to heal you. Jesus is willing to see you living the life that he died for. May your marriage be healed in Jesus' name. May your finances be healed in Jesus' name. May you walk in the newness of life in Jesus' name. May you experience the healing power of God in your mind in Jesus' name. May whatever that has happened when you were still a child that is still tormenting you to this day be healed in Jesus' name. He is willing. He is willing. He is willing to make you whole. When I woke up this morning, he said, I've healed my church. Go and preach the word of healing. Church, the time to live in fear is over. Hallelujah. You know, many of us don't, don't understand how the word works. That's the reason why we, we, we don't know where we stand in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you how the word works. God looks. God frames in his mind. He sees the outcome of his word before he can release the word. When he releases the word, the Holy Spirit looks at the outcome of the word of God in his mind and manifests the outcome as God perceives it. So when God says, by his stripes, you have been healed. He's not saying maybe you will be healed. He doesn't say maybe you shall walk. No. It is as good as done. It is your responsibility not to focus on the symptoms. The little pain that is left in the body when God says you are healed doesn't necessarily mean the absence of healing. Can I talk to someone? The legal pain doesn't necessarily mean what the absence of healing. Because if we go to, to John 4, 56 verse, I want you to say 46 verse 53. John 4, verse 46 to 53.
I want you to check this. For the, so Jesus came again to Cana of Galilee, where he has made the water wine. And there was a certain noble man, noble, rich people there were called noble people. Say there was a certain mutipe there. <laughs> there was a certain noble man whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus had come out of Judea into Galilee, he went to him and implored him to come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Then Jesus said to him, unless you people see signs and wonders, you will by no means believe. Then a bull man said to him, say, come down before my child dies. Jesus said to him, go your way, your son lives. So the noble, the noble man did what? Believed the word that Jesus spoke to him and went his way. As he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, your son lives. Then he inquired of them the hour when he got better. And they said to him, yesterday at the seventh hour, the fe that fever left him. So the father knew that it was the same hour in which Jesus said to him, your son lives. The Bible says the noble man knew that it was the same hour. Look here. The Bible doesn't say it was the same minute. Amen? The Bible doesn't say it was what? The same minute. It doesn't say it was the same five minutes. It said it was, it was the same hour. So the healing might, your healing might take longer. Within an hour you might be, but it doesn't mean that when you are still feeling the pain, in that hour you are not healed. Hallelujah. It doesn't mean that the word of God is not manifesting when you are still feeling the symptoms of sicknesses. The Bible said in that hour the fever left him. And it says he got better. It means that he got better on his way to what? To healing. Why? Because the father believed the word. So the word will process the healing. As you continue to believe, the word will continue to do what? To process the healing. There was a man who was healed, who was healed in a crusade. He was prayed for and he got healed. And he went and he was jumping up and down. He was happy that he is healed. And he went to his church. As he goes to his church, the pastor said, I heard you went to the crusade, you were healed. He said, yes, I'm healed. And the pastor said, how sure are you? Did you, did, did you get checked by the doctor? The, doctor, the man said, no, I was not checked. He said, go and, go and be checked to the doctor. What if that man is lying to you? What was the pastor doing? Stealing the word. That healed. And he saw the spirit of what? Of doubt into his spirit man. And what happened? The man got sick again and he died. So he was not, he, he was not killed by sickness this time. He was killed by doubt that was sown in his spirit man. So I want to put it to you that when a word is released unto your spirit man, hold on unto that word. Irrespective of the circumstances, irrespective of what people are saying about you, whether they believe it or not, stick to it. Hold on to it like a bulldog. Don't, don't listen to the naysayers and the doomsayers. Whether they are believing it or not, whether the lab results are saying this or not, no, stick to to the word of God until you see the word of God manifest that which it says it will manifest in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You are not meant to be a victim of circumstances. Many of us are victim of what we hear. Do you believe in that man? Do you believe every word that he says? That man, no, no. I mean, I mean, you have been in this church for too long. Well, how, come were you, how come you were not healed? 
How, how come nothing happened? What's so special about him that he comes and then lay his hands? No, go to the doctor. It is pride versus the word of God. Hallelujah. Psalm 107 verse 20 says, He sent his word and healed, and healed them of all their diseases. When Jesus Christ sent his word and heals you from all your diseases, his word has the capacity to go to the place where even the surgeon, the operation cannot reach. The word of God has the capacity to walk back into the womb of time and deal with the source of sickness. If in your bloodline there is diabetes, the word of God will go to the root cause of that diabetes in the bloodline and uproot it. It goes back beyond what the doctors can operate. If the word of, if, if they say in, the, in your bloodline there is cancer, I want to put it to you today that that cancer is not your portion. That cancer is not your portion. The word of God has the ability to walk back into the womb of time and deal with the root cause of that cancer. Why? The Bible says he was crucified before the foundation of the world. The blood was shed before time was. That healing power in the blood of Jesus Christ is still available for you today to be healed. It doesn't matter whether that cancer killed your grandfather. It doesn't matter who died of whatever diabetes in your family. But when the word of God is released in your life, it goes straight to your bloodline and causes that healing power to manifest even for the future generations after you. Am I talking to someone? That's the healing power. The world waiteth. The world is waiting for the manifestation of the children of God. Is this the church that Jesus Christ died for? Will the disciples of old Wake up and be proud of us. What will Peter say if you wake up and find that today's church is hiding, is afraid? They'll be surprised. Peter will say to this church, when I saw Jesus walking the water, I wanted to do what Jesus Christ did. Can't today's church be willing to do what Jesus Christ did? Be the fountain of healing. Let us be the fountain of restoration. How do we do that? Psalm 107 verse 20. He sent us his word and heal them and deliver them from their destruction. I'm not saying go out there and lay hands on people. No, send the word of God. Whoever that you know that is sick, it is your responsibility as a child of God to send the word of God. Even Jesus Christ did the same to the nobleman. He sent his word and healed him. And the Bible says that on the next day, when the nobleman asked his servant, said, that very hour that Jesus Christ spoke the word, that he believed the child was healed. Learn to send the word of God. Learn to send the word of God. Learn to send the word of God in your situation. Hallelujah. There is somebody here. You know someone in your family is bedridden. Everybody say, please let us update our policies. Our funeral, what, what? This person might go any time. You cannot afford to speak that language. You should be the one saying, let us fast and pray. 
Let us believe God. Jesus Christ said, this one only comes out by what? By, by fasting and what? And prayer. Hallelujah. Am I talking to someone this morning? I want you to know that every time there is, can I just highlight something to you before we close? You know I won't finish preaching without talking about Genesis, right? Genesis chapter 1 verse 2 speaks about the Holy Spirit moving upon the face of the waters. He, he, he is not reacting to the disorder until God speaks. When God speaks, the Spirit moves. So when you release the word of God concerning healing, the Holy Spirit moves. You are the carrier of healing. All of you who are sitting here, you carry the healing power. Not only to heal sickness and diseases, you can heal the church. You can heal families. You can heal children who are wayward, who are out of order in their families. They are waiting for you to release that healing word. You can heal families that are divided. Release that healing word. You can heal everything that needs to be healed. Because the Bible says the world is waiting for the manifestation. Meaning it is the world that is sick and its systems. It needs us to heal it. Hallelujah. We are going to fast and pray, starting from the first. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we are fasting. These three days. You, are, you, you will be praying for God to manifest him, live it, live it. You will be praying for God to manifest in your life. Say to God, the word of God says the world is groaning, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. I am that son. I am that daughter. God, do it. As we fast and pray, you are saying to God, it is me that is going to manifest. It is me that is opening up my spirit man to you. It is me who will be the carrier of the healing power. It is me. I believe your weight. I know your weight. I know what you did on the cross. I want to pray for people to be healed. I want that marriage to be healed. I want that family to be healed. I want that person to be healed bodily. We are going to release the healing power upon this nation. Our society will be healed. Our government will be healed. Everything that concerns us will be healed. The church will be healed. Everything that concerns us will be what? Will be healed. Why? Because of power of prayer and the word of God. Hallelujah. Can the church stand up? Can the church stand up? Shall never lose his power. Come on, say it like a minute. 